So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Nella Brown. I'm a PhD student here at, uh, at X, and this is my colleague Katarina. So today uh, we wanted to sort of talk to you about this workshop that we did with two other colleagues of ours um, under the banner of GHack, and it was basically to teach um, sort of beginners who don't know anything about programming or audio or web uh, web audio API. So it's kind of a quite uh, big task. So GHack is the sort of a collector of researchers, female researchers at the School of X at Queen Mary's University of London. And we started the group in 2011 because we wanted to kind of set up this supportive space where girls can kind of share skills and do some interactive stuff, hack into things and make uh, interactive media installations. And we uh, got sponsored by Queen Mary's to start off. And then afterwards we picked up a couple of commissions. So we kind of kept the group going so instead of kind of finishing it one year. I think we've been running it now for four years. Some of our projects you can see here, I think the top one with the flower, that was the first project that we did in collaboration with the Central St. Martins. We did this kind of interactive part of their uh, uh, big installation, which was a large table with hundreds of flowers. And there was something to press. When you press, the, light, uh, the flowers light up and they play the, some sound. And that was exhibited at V&A and various other exhibition places. Uh, as a spin out of that, we did some workshops as well. And we got commissioned to do another two pieces. This is the last one that we did, which is called Light Touch. Um, it's sort of a, we hacked into the commercial lasers and created the collaborative music making uh, environment in space. That was the, the picture from Digital Shortage that we took it to CMMR when we ran some research studies with participants there. So that's us. And apart from that, we also run workshops kind of to teach other women how to hack into things and use the technology that we have so that we pass on the knowledge forward. And uh, that's kind of a, the, that's how the whole kind of a system works. So, why did we decide to do this G-Hack workshop at Sonar? Um, so a couple of years ago I was hacking at Sonar and Katarina was also doing hacking in other music hack days. And we realized that actually out of like 100 hackers there, there were like five girls. And we thought maybe we can improve the ratio if we teach some women how to hack and show them actually that's lots of fun because we like to do it. And then so maybe next year they'll come and do uh, some hacking at the Barcelona Music Hack Day too. So the four of us, Katrina, Magda, myself, and uh, Patricia, uh, conjured up this workshop. And there's a few pictures of us uh, doing it at Sonar with participants and, of course, posing in front of the big Sonar uh, poster, which is a must, of course, so you can prove that you've been there. And also, we proposed to Sonar to run this women uh, hackers panel because we know lots of projects of kind of women hack spaces around the world. And we got in touch with a couple of projects, uh, which were two from Spain. Donna Steck and Fetch Blender Lab, and another one uh, who uh, our colleague Amelie Anglad, who's just finished a PhD recently with zero corrections, so she's my hero at the moment, uh, <laughs> whilst I'm preparing my, uh, my PhD thesis. And she sort of uh, represented Open Tech School as well as Hackership and kind of talked to us about uh, other projects that she was involved with. So we ran that too, which was also cool. So we started preparing this workshop at Queen Mary, and we were thinking about okay, how can we? Teach, we wanted to teach all sorts of stuff, everything basically, and uh, in including the things that you do at Music Hack Days, you know, using various APIs, you know, uh, all sorts of things, as well as Web Audio API. And we were trying to find a way how we can combine those two, but it just ended up to be too long a workshop because they only gave us three hours. So we had to really just focus on Web Audio API, and there was a lot of stuff that we had to explain within that. And the good thing was that we had in the team, we had Magda and Katarina, who are part of Center for Digital Music, and they're like researching, you know, in DSP and also mathematical modeling, etc. Um, I am doing HCI for my research, and my background is also sound design and sonic art, as well as digital signal processing and synthesis, so I know that. Whilst uh, Patricia was kind of, a, she didn't know anything about any of this, and zero about coding, and she was kind of, but she had lots of experience of running workshops. Uh, so from beginners and advanced in our area. So she was a really kind of a checkpoint for us. As soon as we would kind of roll out some slides and say, and, and then we're going to tell them about this and that, she would just go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm not understanding any of this. So we had to kind of backtrack to say, okay, okay, she's our like, kind of like a participant and we can test everything on her just to see whether the concepts are too uh, complex. So I've kind of put up some slides. I don't know how much you can see, but it's, that's not the point because... In the first part, uh, introduction part of the workshop, we sort of had to go through lots of things. For instance, you know, what is hacking? Uh, when did Music Hack Day start? What's that all about? Uh, things like, you know, who is developing things for the web? Which companies are involved? What does this mean? 
and what are these standards on the web. Uh, then a little bit about sound, digital compression, uh, what does API stand for, because nobody knew. Um, and then we kind of all started talking about this thing about the concept of the audio of the web, on the web. So like HTML5 audio element, and then how it moves on to audio data API, the differences between doing that, and then how we arrived to the web audio API. And then we sort of concentrated a little bit about talking about the building blocks of the web audio API, because we kind of thought we get, gave everybody a picture about this various elements of sort of a why we're talking about, you know, the digital sound and why we're talking about APIs. And then we kind of talked a little bit more about the uh, audio notes, like different kind of notes. And then because we were going to use in, in that day's hack, we were going to use filters. It was kind of important uh, because people obviously, we presume that people wouldn't know what's filtering in terms of any kind of a musical sound processing. So we gave them a little bit of DSP, not too much, just about, you know, the types of filters, and the types of filter parameters that you can have, because then later on in the code they go, okay, if I need to use on the high pass filter and it says here it's number seven, so now I know I'm using this, and this is the kind of effect I'm going to get. Just, just a little bit. I mean, I'm sure it was quite overwhelming for everybody in the beginning until they kind of started <coughs> to listen to things. There was loads of web audio API graphs that we found online, but obviously we have simplified things for our beginners and we made a completely new graph based on what we were doing. So they can connect things up and later on go back to it once we take them through the code and say, okay, this is the context and then load things up in the buffer and this is how you connect things, connect the game. We were just using simple things, so control by a game and filter. So we showed them that in the beginning. This is the graph. And then we followed from that. We thought it would be good if we showed them the demo that Chris Wilson from Google has done, because that's a really nice eye candy one, and it kind of has, has got fantastic interface, and we couldn't replicate that in a short space of time. So that's Chris Wilson's demo. I would, uh, if you don't know anything about web audio API, look him up, he's got a GitHub, so you can download it and have a little tinker with it. And so here you can see further on the left kind of thing, that little kind of play button that's like a buffer, you load up the sound, you connect things, how does sound changes, if you connect certain different uh, uh, audio notes to it, and that you need to connect it to the speaker, otherwise you won't be able to hear the sound. What we proposed to do at that day's hack was a sound map of sonar. So we also had to kind of use HTML and JavaScript as well. And then we told them about the tools that we're going to be using for people who have never compiled any code. We were like, okay, you know, text editor versus text editor. You know, you can write code in Word, but then you just won't see any syntax, and this is how it would look if you use something else. And this was kind of a major issue here about the browser compatibility because we had issues with it ourselves because people are kind of developing things in the background. So you kind of need to go, keep going on to this can I use .com or your web API a website to check whether the browser that you have is still working with what they're doing, is still working with what you've just coded, so, you know, so they don't get flabbergasted a bit if they go home and stuff it doesn't work. And then we downloaded some things that we needed, like tools, and uh, in this case, in the scenario, we also had to kind of get everybody to go under the hood a little bit, tiny little bit, just to go to terminal and set up the local host so you can run the server, run your machine like it's a server, so then we can run the rest of the code. And so my colleague Katrina is going to explain to you how then we got the participants mm -hmm. to uh, get into the code, yeah. the hairy part. <laughs> and actually, the idea was to make them understand the philosophy of the music hack days because you build uh, a hack in 24 hours but uh, of course you you are not able to build everything from scratch there you have to use a uh, code that are freely accessible in the internet or code that you have already made before and make a hack on, based on them by manipulating some parameters or taking other parts of other codes. And for our purpose, we created uh, three folders of codes that we uh, gave to the participants. And the first part was um, uh, the idea to describe what HTML and JavaScript is uh, and use the audio element and make, the, make them clear that the limitations that you have when you use the audio element instead of web audio API. And then we wanted to make them sure that they understood how to load and play sounds uh, through the WebOT API. So we made this kind of uh, slides for them as well to understand how the HTML is built and how you can embed the JavaScript inside it. 
so that they can understand how they will do it. And then we also provided this kind of code, uh, which of course is not ours uh, by scratch, because you use also code from uh, other GitHub or videos from YouTube or other websites that we found. And we make all together and we built our code in the end. And we were going line by line, describing how we load, how we play sounds. And so that was uh, the not boring part of the workshop, but it was important to understand how it works. And then they could be able to build their own stuff. Uh, so we also uh, made them uh, understand how uh, to create sounds using an oscillator object through the WebBot API. And we provided uh, this kind of code where you could also play around with parameters. And then the second part of the code was to create uh, the base for playing multiple sounds uh, from WebBot API and add filtering. Uh, and then we introduced the function of spectrum visualization so that they could also visualize the sound that they produce. And we also uh, used this um, object called filter.type where they could play around all with these uh, types uh, of filtering. And then we all did all this uh, um, code for creating our own hack where we presented there, which was the sound map, as Nella said, where we uh, put an image of the Sonar Festival in Barcelona. And we had the idea of putting um, sources of sounds into the image and produce them and filter them or play around with them. Uh, so the idea was uh, to have three sources of sound, uh, one in a plaza, in a place, Plaza España, one in a venue, and one in the fountain. And whenever you move the cursor on that, you change the sound based on gain or filtering. Uh, I will show a demo after this. Um, so the idea was uh, to connect uh, its sound in, in separate nodes so that we can put different kind of filters to each one of them. Uh, but the tricky part on that was uh, that we wanted all the sounds to sound simultaneously. But um, uh, that was difficult to do uh, based on the buffers and the nodes that we created. Uh, and then we uh, made the code uh, in its way so that they could also uh, have the opportunity to manipulate these parameters and play around with this image. Uh, so now I can show a little bit of the demo. <laughs> That's the it one, right? A wild oh, it takes ah, a okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, okay, the one idea was to. This is from Cold Part Two, uh, where they could play uh, random sounds and they could put uh, filterings on them. So now you could hear a sound that is loaded, whatever random sound, and then you can put a high pass or pan, or also the volume. And we were, we let them play with this uh, a lot. And then we built this hack, which was this, So here, the idea is to move the cursor and take the coordinates of the image and change the parameters based on the location of its sound. So now, we're going close to plus expander, so the cloud is sound louder. We go up and we go down. Now, we're going 
inside the building where the uh, venue is, the solar venue is. So we put a uh, low pass filter outside and then we go inside and, have, and the sun is here. And also there is a fountain here, but I recommend to put here to hear the, dis the difference. We just want to put the gate so that you can hear the sound of the water. So, apart from challenges of teaching code, which is always a challenge, I guess, of oh, five minutes, thank you. So, some of the challenges of sort of teaching women beginners and in kind of a, such a public venue and not knowing anything about who's coming, etc., etc., it's kind of a, we had everything prepared, of course, as we researcher, you know, we pre-workshop questionnaire, post-workshop questionnaire, and the pre-workshop questionnaire fell down the pan because we only got the list of uh, participants the night before from Sonar. So we couldn't email everybody and find out what their educational background is, where they're from, uh, what is the operating system, what's the computers that they're bringing, so we can, you know, we prepared as much as we could for like, you know, Windows, uh, Linux and Mac. And what is their coding and hacking experience, all of those kind of things, and whether they're musicians, so they, all these things we can talk about more depth or whether we kind of have enough things, uh, sorry, time to explain everything, musical, musical terms. So we had to find out all of that in the beginning of the workshop, uh, which is fine. I mean, we just got everybody to uh, get up and say their name, and then people got to know each other. So later on during the workshop, it was much easier to kind of say, oh, could you guys sit together because you've got windows, and when we start setting everything up with the local host, help each other, whoever's got it done first. And uh, so that was quite handy for that. And of course, uh, there was an issue, sometimes an issue with the class dynamics, because even though we advertise it as hack school for women, hack shop for women, etc., etc., two guys came and they sat down and were like, oh, we really want to wear a word on the API. But obviously, because we advertise it as that, we kind of didn't want to disturb the dynamics and everybody kind of to think this is, you know, now turning into something else. So we had to kind of uh, leave our details with the guys and just tell them, well, we'll send you all the slides and this is the links that you can look up so, you know, so, and we'll tell you everything that we've been uh, teaching. So that's kind of smooth things over. We had, uh, yes, so we did manage to use a workshop evaluation questionnaire, kind of fusing the, the pre-workshop and the post-workshop questionnaire all in one. And so we had 15 questions to find out things about uh, that we want to do. And then uh, six out of 14 participants uh, uh, filled them on online. And there were, you can see there were kind of ages, like 20 years gap, like from 20 to 39, which is quite a quite wide range. And you wouldn't have told that, you know, in the workshop. They all kind of seemed a similar age almost. And um, they were mainly amateur musicians, with, ranging from basic programming to some advanced, and even we had a couple of lectures, they were teaching computing. So no knowledge of web audio API for anybody. So that was all completely new to them. Obviously, it was new to us, so it's a quite, a, you know, fairly new concept anyways. They were first time participating in women-only class, and the thought of the focus of women was good. They were happy with that, and that's why they came. And um, with the knowledge of hacking, this ranges from no hacking. I think there was one person that attended one music hack day, and that's basically out of the whole group. And so basically we wanted to know what was the most useful and least useful thing that they've learned. And the most useful, they say, you know, okay, we found out about capabilities of JavaScript, and we found out about JavaScript in the first place and that you can make music with code. That was like a breakthrough for them, because, you know, doing DJing and little kind of a production, music production things, that was new. And uh, the lecturers got some useful ideas to set up the student project, so we'll be in touch with them, and maybe their students will be doing something about web audio API. Least useful, they wanted to have more hands-on coding, of course, three hours with all of this is just, you know, hoping for the best. Um, they thought, some of them thought that basic coding knowledge would help them understand some things, but they said they needed to go through materials later on in a bit more depth. And that if we had time to download the tools ahead of the workshop like we planned, uh, we would have kind of saved time and for more explanations. But um, this is what we got. This is the contact info. You can look up more about GHAC on this uh, web link to see actually about all, all of the other projects. And you can get in touch with me, uh, Katerina, if you have any questions. But now I guess, questions? Is this question time? Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, so questions. Are the slides downloadable or do we have to write to you to get them? Which slides? Uh, the workshop slides, the, uh, the 
once you were showing at this sonar event? No, well, you have to, yeah, write to that to us and then we'll work out how to send them to you or whatever. You, the, the, the ones for the sonar, yeah, yeah. We have, uh, they are uploaded, but uh, uh, we still don't know where should we host them so that every other people uh, except from the participants can have access on them. So yeah, if you yeah, if you just send us an uh, email and then we'll once we work it out. Yeah. Sorry, anybody else? Yeah. Uh, why do you need a web server for running this thing? I mean, isn't that run run on the browser itself? For some reason, I mean, when we went into, when we looked into, because obviously we were like, okay, we really want to do this. This is hot, but what is it? <laughs> so we had to actually figure out what this Web Audio API is and teach ourselves what is it. And then somewhere in Chris Olson's code, we kind of tried to do things, and then things were falling over, and we couldn't figure out why things are not working. And then we went into this little README file, Hmm? And says, okay, the things will not yes, work things. unless you do this. Mm -hmm. Like two lines, it was like, duh. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Ask Chris Wilson. <laughs> so have no clue. Yeah, we have to run it through local hosts yeah. so that you can have sound. Otherwise, uh, oh, there's no sure. there's no sound. No. So maybe because they're still working this. I mean, there's the you know I was mentioning like the Google and Mozilla and now uh, Microsoft. I think they on board, so they will form this kind of a, a, a research group in which they're working on this web audio API to make it better and to make it a standard. So until that happens, things are going to be a little bit like this and a little bit like that. That's why you have to, you know, once we had this scenario when the night before everything was working, came tomorrow, not working. Yeah. <laughs> so and also I had a conversation uh, from one uh, uh, guy who works in Mozilla, Firefox. He was also there in the Music Hack Day. And he told me, I showed him the call. He said, ah, oh, nice, uh, good job. But he said, uh, this thing uh, will not work next month. Uh, it's said, oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so it's like in progress, everything. Yeah. This is why we had that slide, you know, compatibility and, you know, can I use .com, blah, blah. Go and check it out whether you can use it today, if you've done it yesterday almost. Uh, I'm interested, I mean, you said you taught, obviously you were just saying you taught yourself the web audio guy for the purpose of this. I'm wondering what you've thought of it, what your, what your impression is in terms of how it's going and how it compares with either a general purpose like an environment like Python or another sound production environment like Super Collider or something like that? Well, sorry, yes. Yeah, no, the idea for building this is uh, to have, uh, and to change, um, to manipulate sounds uh, from your web or browser mm -hmm. and the, the big community that they use it is from online gaming. So they, they use uh, the specific uh, API to produce uh, the sounds. So probably they they know how um, they know them um, how how they use this uh, instead of Python or other offline sources. Um, I mean the the issue that we were talking about early on. You were oh. starting with talking about audio element, or you can just play. Okay, fine. And then you have the audio data API. But with this, I mean, they want to tackle three things. So one is the gaming, as she was kind of saying, and also 3D games and loading everything really fast to the browser. And then the other one was actually uh, uh, building synthesizers and live synthesis on the go also through a browser. And as well as, I guess, they're kind of thinking along the ways of having a music production system. Obviously, you need to build a whole front end. Mm -hmm. It's like if you try um, Chris Wilson's demo, you'll see what I mean. It kind of looks like Maximus P, so you connect things, and this is what happens. And so they're sort of pushing it through through kind of uh, old avenues. And also there's going to be some kind of modules where you can process live sound. So if you have live sound, then you can use that for the process as well. Okay. Well, I think if there are any more questions, we'll uh, take them at the tea break. So thanks very much again. Thank you. Thank you.